Hey, hello everyone. It is um, Sunday night here in Chicago. It's about seven o'clock. Uh, I did not have time to do any weekly uh, reviews this uh, weekend, so I just uh, got out, uh, you know, from out of town. So I just thought I'll do a quick video on um, what's happened, and, and you know, let's see where this takes us into next week. So basically, I want to do quickly a couple of performance charts um, from the last week. Uh, you can see the ten-year-old. Uh, gold and oil uh, was the best were the best performance upwards of four percent so a little bit of moving to commodities i would say uh, with the u.s dollar that was flat the bitcoin that was down about four percent russell and pretty much the equities the large equities have lost uh, between a percent and almost three percent on the small caps if you take a look here, uh, you can see that the only one uh, was the 10-year yields. That was, and maybe that was one of the reasons uh, the sharp rise in yields, um, you know, put a little bit of uh, of a break um, onto the equity excitement. Um, I don't think nothing extremely serious just yet. Um, S&P here, you can see Russell, um, you know, high beta quality, low low volatility healthcare staples. You, even the defensive sectors were. Um, you know, kind of down on the week. So I want to take you through the charts. Um, what I like to look at is kind of clean without any indicators or any counts, anything like that. Tomorrow we'll start uh, back uh, with a daily drip and we'll review the counts and, um, you know, we'll go a little bit into more detail about what kind of what's going on with these trends, depending on kind of how we open the week um, and this quarter for that matter. But we had a you know, some severe um, losses um, on one of the comments from the Federal Reserve, but that got kind of quickly bought. And, and, you know, back on Friday, I think we rallied, uh, closing up about halfway up through this scandal from an obvious support of about 51.50. I still think that until this one gives way, um, you know, this trend is still uh, pretty much intact uh, without, you know, a lot of reasons here to get... Um, you know, super bearish. I mean, you can you can you know lighten up or be a bit cautious uh, due to this formation up here. But um, you know, the fact that you haven't closed below 51.50, I still think uh, proves that uh, path of least resistance remains to the upside. And until that gets taken down, at least on a weekly basis, there is there's not much here. We could very simple just create um, another bullish engulfing next week and continue to go higher. Now, uh, this is on, you know, the cap weighted on the equal weighted side of the S uh, of the S&P. You know, we have a little bit of a bullish engulfing from the highs. Um, it's just the first week, right? So um, you kind of have to have a little bit of confirmation, a little bit of a follow through the following week. And this um, we'll see how, how it's going to go. But from an equal weighted, you could see that the bears were a little bit stronger and uh, try to break the strand somewhat successful but uh, you know i still think there is about at 160 or 165 there's going to be a little bit of support so we're watching equal weight and if we get a pullback it'll probably be all the way up here to uh, 167 and and then we'll find bids and, and probably reverse from there uh, you can take a look at the nasdaq um, that's been spending the last 10 weeks in in a couple of uh, tight ranges uh, this level here that I talked about into the daily updates all the time, uh, 17,750 offered support, uh, the market closed back up higher. Um, you know, NASDAQ has been underperforming the market and especially tech stocks with a little bit of a push towards uh, more commodities and energy. Um, but I would not be surprised to see a break of this level. And if we do see a break of this level, I think that's a that's a buy signal for further upside. And if we lose 17,750, then... Um, you know, it's likely that we, we will continue to correct here. So uh, for right now, I mean, we're making higher highs, higher lows, and there's nothing here, just a small tight range. And, and uh, again, the path of resistance should be to the upside because I think we're going to find bids uh, if this market turns a little bit lower. Uh, everybody's kind of waiting for a somewhat of a correction. Uh, NASDAQ composite, uh, kind of the same path. I'm not going to spend time there. Semiconductors, um, you know, they had a little bit of a chance to reverse with this um I don't know how you call it, like a evening star or something. But, you know, no real follow through to the downside. So we're just kind of sideways. Um, no reason to turn super bearish in here either. Uh, if you do lose 4,700, I think, on, um, you know, the, the SOX here on this index, uh, you're probably going to go towards 44. Uh, but, again, until that happens, 
uh, and you would have to have a week. I, I, I don't expect a huge break lower, uh, you know, if they manage to take it down this week as well and kind of close below this level, that's more of a confirmation. You can, you can kind of lighten up, but so far we're still looking pretty decent there too. Um, Dow Jones, uh, you know, had a pretty big drop. I mean, there were, I think, a few stocks, uh, especially, I think, on the healthcare front that kind of did some damage here. But again, came back to this 38,500 support. We talked about this in numerous updates. Uh, it held and it pushed back to the upside. So we got to lose this um, to have expectation that you were going to go all the way back here towards 37. And, you know, the shape of that will, will determine, you know, what we're thinking about the next moves um, to the upside. But, you know, a little bit of a failure above 39,500 and now a sideways consolidation. So we'll see how this resolves. But, you know, that looks pretty bearish, um, you know, but the fact that you held, you know, that's still a positive sign. So, you know, you lose that, you, you have expectations and, you know, you can check that out on a daily basis. Um, you know, sometimes these weekly time frames give you a pretty clean view of kind of what's going on on all these levels. So Russell broke, right? Quite exciting. He had about 210 and it quickly uh, sold back off, but we're still above 200. Now you got a bearish engulfing, but still a pretty decent channel. It's a bit messy. We've talked about this, you know, huge supply zone that's going to come right here. And sure enough, the market responded there. I mean, there's about a, you know, a bit of a fight. You got a nice little base. Um, that you're kind of trying to break out from. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, this should be developing further into a bullish uptrend. I think uptrend, I think the correction, the large correction is done. So, you know, watch the bottom of this channel, maybe for bids. Uh, it's not a perfect setup. I guess if you start to break above 210, I would get excited again, but I would let this market breathe a little bit on the small caps. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, it's uh, beginning just now, a new week. Uh, you know, it sold off to 62.5. We never really reached that 60,000. I was um, kind of talking about, you know, uh, offering bids there, and, and uh, you know, that's still a pretty good support. I mean, still. Uh, you know, these tails are coming from lower, and, and if this is any indication, should be that, you know, there's going to be a breakout coming, and I think I think that's true. This is a, probably a triangle, uh, you know, check out the daily drip for those Elliott Wave updates, but I think there's still, uh, um, you know, further to go towards 90,000 to 100 once this correction completes. I don't see any major deterioration by the way this looks. Uh, just a little bit of a, of a consolidation low, right? Uh, U.S. 10-year yields, that's the one that's been you know, kind of throwing a wrench into the things because it, it broke about 435 or trading 440. And if you notice this uh, pushing further upside into next week, right, that could dampen um, these rallies. So yields are uh, uh, kind of holding steady for now into a range. But, um, you know, we'll watch. If you start to lose back the 4%, right, then then it's likely we're going we're gonna to continue to go lower. Um, so for right now, it's just a watch for me. US dollar also tried to break the strand line. It came back, a little bit of fight up and down. Um, don't have necessarily a good visibility on it. This could very simply be an ABC up, um, or it could be a one, two, forming a one, two, and then you move. So it's got to break some key levels, break above 105 or break below 102, and then we'll, we'll further discuss. But in terms of a weekly formation, there's not much here. I mean, you, you could say that, you know, that's a massive head and shoulder, a continuation pattern lower. And if you break this kind of a slope neckline, you know, you're expecting a drop in the dollar. But, um, Again, I think that's going to have a lot to do with, um, you know, this monetary policy, maybe even fiscal, any announcements, anything like that. For right now, the uh, dollar has been in a pretty sideways range, and it really didn't have a lot of influence over uh, the prices of equities or, or metals, for that matter. I mean, look, dollar is still fairly strong, and you see gold breaking. Right? We've talked about gold breaking here, and, and you know, that's, that's a bullish, as bullish as it gets the moment it breaks a, a key level. Um, and you're closing up at 23.45. I mean, why would you fight this? This is a beautiful, uh, probably a third wave in progress. Um, I would look on the smaller time frames to find, or maybe you know, wait for consolidation. And I think there's further upside to going gold uh, once it broke this massive level that took about three years to develop, right? And now you have the breakout. So you know, didn't even didn't even get a proper retest of this level. So I think I think this is a good development. It's pretty bullish, and then silver too. I think there's a lot more opportunity here. I mean, you have this. I think I put this in one of the daily drips, but um, 
maybe on Twitter too, but you got the inverted head and shoulder type of formation, right? Just a bearish to bullish reversal, sort of a consolidation, big base, break the neckline, clean break at 27.50. I would be a buyer on dips all day long into 26. If you break in 26, then we got problems, but all the way up into there, I think that's a good sign. And further upside, probable. Uh, I mean, you do have uh, you know this level of 29. It's probably going to get tested, and and some uh, some offers will 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 leave up there. But um, I mean, this is as clean of a break as you would want to see. What else you know you would need to see from a market to convince, to tell you that you know uh, uh, it wants to go. So uh, this is a signal. Uh, right, that it broke this huge level, and and um, it's telling you basically, hey, you know, jump on. Um, you know, if 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 you do get below 26, then you know that's obviously a failed breakout, which they happen. Uh, but uh, you know, that's a that's a pretty good thing uh, that I see on silver. And then you know, copper again, uh, it's been consolidated for a long time. Finally, it's moving high. You can see this kind of thirst for commodities. If copper moves, that means that. You know, in terms of him being, a, of it being a barometer for global growth, um, in here breaking 424, it's probably going to go up to 440, and then um, you know I would watch like a 10 week or a 20 week moving average in here, and, and continue to uh, favor the upside based on this look. And then, you know, again we we talked about this level in several weekly wrap ups, right? This 85 level, and we're trading 86.91. So again, a bullish close in oil. Um, no reason to turn bearish here. It's probably going to go up to 95. Uh, this will probably now be support in case of dips. So this is a uh, this is a pretty good, um, I'd say, uh, break and and you know, kind of convincing move for for further upside. I know what that's going to do to um, you know gasoline prices and all of that. I know. I mean, there is a level here at 95. I mean, look, this market came back in 2022, then in 2020, uh, fall 2022, then in, in in the fall of 2023. So that's going to be a level that's not going to get pushed through that easily. But there could still be upside between you know 84, 50, 85, and 95. Right, this range here now uh, becomes totally in focus. And then finally, you got volatility, which spike this week which is the first week i mean this one got sold into it this one got sold just a little bit uh but then you have a massive level coming here at about 17 um where i think they're probably going to sell it so um you know let's see how this goes tomorrow i'll see you for the regular daily drips and the regular daily videos um and um you know I, i'm gonna have some interesting stocks to show you again uh probably tomorrow or tuesday some interesting formations we'll see how this market uh, for right now we're just kind of slightly cautious on these closes uh but i don't think there's any huge interruption in the trend it's a little bit under pressure uh the trend but um it's still it's still there right so let's stick with that and um i'll see you uh, tomorrow Bye bye